Tomorrow, baseball celebrates 75 years since Jackie Robinson became the first black man to play in a major league game. That moment didn't happen overnight. In fact, he first played professionally two years earlier in a league still fighting for its own place in history. NBC News correspondent Shaquille Brewster joins us now with more on that. Hi there, Shaq. Hi there, Morgan. Well, only a handful of pictures even exist of Jackie Robinson in his Negro League uniform, but his mark and legacy on black baseball in America, that is far from forgotten. A lot of the average baseball fan needs to understand that Jackie Robinson is not the beginning of the story of blacks in baseball. In many respects, he's, he's both the apex and the end of the story. Years before he took the field in Brooklyn, Jackie Robinson was a pro in Kansas City. In the summer of 1945, he played with the best black baseball players available in the country, an opportunity born out of the circumstances of World War II. For the 26-year-old, it was a grueling but fruitful season. Stories about Robinson on and off the field have been passed down now through generations of baseball's greats. Just the way he ran the bases, you know, and, and if you look at video of you know, him running the bases wreaking havoc, you know, and, and the way he played the game was just a different style that they had seen in MLB. He came from the Negro Leagues where, you know, it was kind of a show. Inside a once abandoned spot on the corner of 18th and Vine in Kansas City lives a monument to what's normally just a footnote in the history of both Robinson and baseball. Here is where the Negro Leagues and the thousands of people who made it successful are honored and remembered. The history of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum is one that actually very closely mirrors the history of the origins of the Negro Leagues. And when I say that, I say it from the standpoint that no one gave this little museum any chance of succeeding. The Negro Leagues Baseball Museum was founded as a dream in 1990. It started as a one-room office and has grown to 10,000 square feet and several traveling exhibitions. Man, I fell in love with the story. Bob Kendrick is the museum's president. He started as a volunteer in the early 90s and quickly became engrossed in the project that former Negro Leaguers were trying to create. And I considered myself to be a baseball fan and I quickly realized I didn't know a doggone thing about this game because here was this entire chapter of baseball in Americana that I really did not know very much about. One of those former players, Buck O'Neill. O'Neill was an all-star and later manager of the Negro Leagues for Kansas City. He went on to be the Major League's first black coach and for decades was a scout. When I met Buck for the very first time, one of the first questions I asked him was, Buck, what motivated you to want to build a Negro Leagues baseball museum? And his answer was very succinct, but also very pointed, so that we would be remembered. And that's been the quest. Buck would serve as the museum's chairman from its founding until his death in 2006. This past December, his life's work in baseball was honored with election into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. That was one of the things that, that Buck O'Neill brought to American understanding was that this was part of everybody's history. It's, a, it's not just a black story, it's an American baseball story. Uh, so if you're an American or you love baseball, it's equally your story. The museum takes you on a journey through artifacts, like the oldest known garment from the Negro Leagues, a sweater from 1924, and pictures of an all-star tour of Japan in 1927, seven years before major league players visited. But this is all about more than just baseball. The museum makes the bold assertion that Robinson's breaking of the color barrier wasn't just a part of the civil rights movement, that in many ways it was the beginning of the civil rights movement. Both my grandfathers, I guess, um, were huge Brooklyn Dodgers fans, obviously because of Jackie. Just understanding what Jackie was and what he meant to um, us as a people and just us as a country. You know, I think, you know, we, we get it confused with it being a part of baseball history, but it's a part of American history. The black community supported their stars in the majors, but this monumental moment spelled the beginning of the end of the Negro Leagues. And historians often call it a bittersweet moment. It makes me think back and reflect to the fact that we were asking for integration. I still think what we were really wanting was equality, and the two were not the same. Shaq, look, you know, Jackie was the first, but how are players who broke the barrier for other baseball teams not being remembered? I mean, what does their legacy look like?
Yeah, really good point, Morgan, because there were four other Negro League stars who joined the majors in 1947. We're talking about Larry Dobley, Hank Thompson, uh, Willie Brown, and also Dan Bankhead. Each of them will be honored in a, new, in a new traveling exhibit that will begin tomorrow, honoring every team's barrier breaker. Morgan? All right, NBC Shaquille Brewster for Shaq, as always. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.